Good afternoon, thank you very much and welcome here to Cusick Park in Ennis for the final round of action in the Glen Dimplex All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship. It's a super Saturday here on the Camogie Association YouTube page, but as you can see, we are at the game between Clare and Cork. It's winner takes all in this contest as who will qualify for the knockout stages for the quarterfinal draw that will take place later on. We'll run through the two teams in just a few moments, but Cork attacking the goal to the left and on your screen is Aoife Healy, and Aoife Healy sends the ball in towards the attack as the players in red look to get the opening opportunity. Katrina Mackey wearing the number 14 jersey there today, working away inside, being well marshaled by Susan Daly. But Katrina Mackey does have possession, looking for support. Saoirse McCartan is the player with support. Number 15 coming in through. Chance for Cork, a shot. A save on the line from the goalkeeper, Duran Murphy. And the referee is Liz Dempsey from County Kilkenny. And she has blown the whistle. But Cork getting a goal-scoring chance in just the opening seconds of the game. And we're just seeing it on your screen here at the moment. Uh, this was Katrina Mackey sending the ball back to Saoirse McCartan and Saoirse McCartan the block there from the goalkeeper Darren Murphy and a let off for Clare in the early stages both sides have one win and one loss each and they're playing for the chance to come at least second in group one Galway are playing down at the same time we'll keep a tab on how that game is going over the course of this commentary but if Galway are to pick up a result up in Yuri they will top the group Cork have possession of the ball again the ball sits out towards the left, the referee says it was a throw and it's going to be a free out for Clare. So let's run through the Clare team. Duran Murphy is in goal, full back line of two, Kira Grogan. Three, Susan Daly, and four is Quiva Kelly. The half back line were number five, Chloe Mori. Uh, joint captain number six is Claire Hare, and seven is Abby Walsh. In midfield were number eight, Quiva Carmody. Partner by number nine, Linda Daly. And the half forward line ten, Orla Duggan. Eleven, the other joint captain, Neve O'D. And twelve is Cian Spillan. And the inside line, top of the right, number thirteen, Emer Kelly. Full four, number fourteen, Anya Lachlan. And top of the left, where number fifteen is Lorna McDamara. That is the Claire team. We'll run through the court team view in just a few moments. Katrina Mackey very busy in the early stages sends the ball across in the direction of Saoirse McCartan and Saoirse McCartan looking for support on the 45 metre line from Aoife Healy from the Ahada Club and Aoife Healy a block down there in the allocation for Clare but Cork still holding a bit of possession action happening here just outside the D conditions absolutely superb for Camogie today there is a bit of a breeze a strong breeze it is too blowing in favour of Clare in the first half as Orla Duggan sends the ball down in towards the attack that's an excellent take there uh, by Nemo D she sends it in towards the attack and chasing after that is Emer Kelly and Emer Kelly can this be Clare's first scoring opportunity of the day and there's just a hold up again the referee Liz Dempsey has blown the whistle and we'll just have a delay for a couple of moments as Emer Kelly feels the effects of that challenge and that gives us a chance quickly to run through the Cork team, 1-15 to 15 is lined out, Amy Lee in goal full back line of 2, Maeve Murphy 3 is Libby Cobbinger and 4 is Maeve Callan, the half back line were number 5, Aoife Healy, 6 is Laura Tracy and 7 is Izzy O'Regan in midfield were number 8, Saoirse McCarthy, part number 9, Pamela Mackey the half forward line, 10, Chloe Sigerson 11, Fiona Keating and 12 is Kleena Healy, and the inside line top of the right, number 13, the captain, Amy O'Connor Full forward, number 14, Katrina Mackey, and 15 is Saoirse McCartan. There's a few positional switches in that Cork team too. You might have seen the throw and there was Aoife Ely 5 and Chloe Sickers in 10 that went in in midfield as we keep an eye on Emer Kelly. And Emer Kelly, who's uh, studied sport and physical uh, activity in MTU in Cork. She's also been involved in self help, self help Africa as well. So hopefully she is okay in that challenge there, so we'll keep a tab on that. And as I mentioned at the very start of our broadcast, it's the Super Saturday of Camogie in the Glen Dimplex All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship. And stick with us all the way till about 8 o'clock this evening for live action. We are here with Claire and Cork at the moment, and a few Cork players uh, just playing with the sitter. So a bit of concern here for Emer Kelly. The Claire dugout is right below us here in the commentary box. Uh, no activity, a few subs warming up, but no signal yet that they they could have to make an early substitution. But as I mentioned there, we are here. Clare against Cork. Three o'clock throw in at a half past four. It's Waterford against Antrim. That's in group three. And then six o'clock, Kilkenny, the All-Ireland champions, up against Tipperary. And when that game is over in UPMC, Nolan Park, we will have the draw for the Glen Dimplex All-Ireland Senior Camogie uh, quarterfinals. Two teams from the three groups will qualify, leaving us with six. Two of the three group winners will get a bye in 
into the semi-final and the other group winner plus the three runners-up will go into next week's quarter-finals which both take place in Crow Park one on Saturday before the hurling game between Galway and Limerick the second on Sunday before the hurling semi-final between Clare and Kilkenny so Amber Kelly just in a bit of distress there but she's lifting her head up there hopefully she will be okay and of course, as I mentioned, those games as well. Of course, there's three matches we don't have stream, but we keep an eye on scores. Galway against Down currently taking place in this group. Galway top of Group One. They have four points, and if they get a win or a draw, they're guaranteed the top Group One. Clare against Cork, two points apiece, but Cork with a superior scoring difference after their three nineteen to one ten victory over Down two weeks ago. They have a plus twelve scoring difference. They lost to Galway one twelve to twelve points the first day. Kelly got in her feet there, went back down so this is not looking good for the Clare corner forward and it looks like unfortunately for uh, John Carmody and his management team they are going to be making a substitution and that's a real blow there now, so yes the signal has been given we are going to have a substitution whether it was the way she went down our collision and you can see even some teammates coming over to check in her as well, they just realise exactly how serious this is Clare, I was just mentioning as well, they lost to Galway 113 to 13 points two weeks ago after a 119 to 211 victory over down in round one. They have a plus two scoring difference, so uh, they have to win this game. A draw will be good enough for Cork to put them into the quarterfinals at the least. And we're having a look around to see if there's a stretcher anywhere. I can tell you, though, uh, number 18, Muren Scannon, has gotten her bib off, so it looks like she'll be the player coming in for number 13 Emer Kelly but we're going to have a significant delay we've had a significant delay already nearly 7 minutes officially gone in this game scoreboard there no score Claire Cork but we've had a hold up here and that's going to add to the added time so Mirren Scanlon from the 6 Mile Bridge Club will be entering the field shortly Replacing Emer Kelly from True Clonara. And there's the official substitution. And Muren Scanlon on the field of play. So a massive blow for Clare in these early stages. If you're just joining us here at the Camogie Association YouTube page, you haven't missed anything in regards to scoring. But unfortunately for Clare, Emer Kelly has picked up what looks like a serious injury. And she's been helped off on one leg. So that's a blow. For Clare Cork, with a goal scoring opportunity, Sersha McCartan forcing a save from Darren Murphy. But Clare have had to make an early substitution. It looks like we're going to restart the action with a throw in on the 20 metre line. So, how will this affect Clare? So, the referee Liz Dempsey not happy to go just yet. These teams did meet. In the National League earlier this year, Cork went in 219 to 110 on that occasion back on the 25th of February. Their last meeting in the Championship was last year in Porky Rin on the 28th of May, and it was 217 to 25 favouring Cork on that occasion. But you might remember the epic Munster final before, and the Cork just edged after two periods of extra time. Certainly, these two teams are well able to entertain, but play has to be started, and the ball is in the 45 metre line with Sersha McCarthy from Corsi Rovers. Lays the ball off. Cork on the move against the wind in the first half this is Izzy O'Regan Izzy O'Regan gives the pass to Saoirse McCartan sending a cross field ball in hoping that Katrina Mackey can get on the end of that but Clare have closed it out win possession it's now in the hands of Clare Hare Clare Hare to Cueva Carmody Cueva Carmody across to the left and ball in the middle of the park and you can just hear the claps in the background there for Emer Kelly a massive blow for her on a big day like this from the True Clonara Club a Cork win possession back the referee says a foul being committed on Pamela Mackey and you can see there Pamela Mackey she is wearing number 9 but she is back it looks like the full back line so Amy Lee the Cork goalkeeper is going to come out and take this she was the captain last year and she will restart the action just outside her own 20 metre line. Amy Lee, the Cork goalkeeper, sending it across. Who will get the first score this game? Saoirse McCartan is going to lose out on that occasion to Abby Walsh. And Abby Walsh for Clare, trying to keep control. Good marking from the Cork player. She's done enough to win a sideline cut. The far side of the field. 
Cork taken quickly. The referee wasn't ready. So we're going to do it again. So in the middle of the park, and it's sent back in the direction of Laura Tracy. Laura Tracy with a low ball down, and Cork in the middle of the field is going to be driven down across in the direction of Katrina Mackey with the white boots and the uh, slightly maroon style helmet. Katrina Mackey trying to turn her player inside, but Susan Daly staying tight with her, gives the pass off for Saoirse McCarthy. Saoirse McCarthy trying to get a bit of space, got hooked at the time by uh, Kira Grogan, the danger has not been averted, and Amy O'Connor was knocking around there as well, and uh, Kleena Healy with possession of the ball back to Amy. Amy O'Connor's all about going for a shot, couldn't get it and fouled the ball in the process, so it's got to be a free out for Clare but certainly Cork in the early stages of this match creating more opportunities but haven't managed to raise a white flag yet so it's going to be a free out for Clare taken by Clare here from Mina Kilnamona and Clare will give them a massive lift now if they get the first score of this game. Long ball down the direction of Murin Scanlon. Doesn't work out for her as Maeve Callan got the touch in the green helmet as Kleena Healy gives it back to Maeve. Maeve sends it across in the middle of the field. Good link up play by Cork. Chloe Sigerson, the player that sends it down in the direction of Amy O'Connor and the captain of 2023 for Cork has it. This is the first score of the game. It goes across the left for the first official wide of this contest. 11 minutes gone here in Cusick Park in Innes and it's still no score. Clare no score. Cork no score. Clare go for the short puck out. Quiva Kelly from the Kilkishan Club with possession. Uh, just didn't get the clearance off smoothly but manages to get it in the direction of Clare Hare or at least briefly because Fiona Keating wasn't having any of that. Amy O'Connor can she get the ball into her hands? Uh, Clare Hare just sticking tight. They know how dangerous Amy O'Connor can be. And Amy O'Connor sends it across if Katrina Mackey can get in this. Just goes over her head. There's still a bit of space for the five-time All-Ireland winner to use. Gives the pass to Sergio McCann and Sergio McCartan is getting in an opportunity for Cork for scoring the game of saves in the net. It's a goal for Cork in the 12th minute and Sergio McCartan puts the ball into the back of the net. Clear leaving the space open and we just see it here now on the replay. You can see Katrina Mackey giving it to Sergio McCartan. She got inside the two players and it was always going to be difficult for Duran Murphy. She got a touch but the ball in the net and it's Cork one goal. Clear no score in the 12th minute of the game. Clear need a response straight away and this is Orla Duggan sending in towards the goal and puts the ball over the bar an excellent response there by Clare from Orla Duggan and it's one point for Clare one goal for Cork and you can just see it here again now uh, Orla Duggan and this is the response that the home team needed Orla Duggan with the shot putting the ball over the bar and it's a two point ball game and maybe this contest is going to start picking up now after the slow start and obviously the injury to Emer Kelly Clare have been very, very promising in the last couple of years without getting that big breakthrough in championship. Indeed, they did beat Kilkenny in the opening round of the league this year on the 19th of February, 2-7 to 11 points. But their form in championship hasn't been strong over the last five years. They haven't come out of their group on four of those. And in 2020, in the quarterfinal, they suffered a heavy defeat to Cork, 3-15 to 8 points. Cork on the move again, got the start that they wanted. Inside the 45-meter line, Amy O'Connor with possession. Looking around for support, and there's the support from Fiona Keating. Fiona Keating finds a bit of space. She'll probably go for this, you know. Fiona Keating with the shot into the hands of the goalkeeper from Clare Castle, Duran Murphy. And Duran doesn't waste any time, but it's won by Izzy O'Regan. Izzy O'Regan with the ball, gives it off to Laura Tracy, or not to Laura Tracy, to Saoirse McCarthy. Saoirse McCarthy back to Izzy. Izzy O'Regan might have another go as buds it into the space, and Clare just be left open again if this opens up for Katrina Mackey. The question is, where's Saoirse McCarthy? Well, it's the other Saoirse, Saoirse McCarthy that has the ball down the left getting away from Susan Daly coming inside the high challenge was there and it's going to be a free in for Cork and no doubt the Clare fullback is going to be having a conversation with our match referee Liz Dempsey from Kilkenny what you call the professional foul so Susan Daly will get a yellow card and Cork will get an opportunity now to take a free that is the yellow card officially given to the Clare number three and Amy O'Connor will be taking this when play restarts, but Saoirse McCarthy just receiving some attention at the moment. Saoirse McCarthy formed a formidable half-back line with Cork last year, along with Laura Hayes, who's out injured at the moment. They still hope in Cork that she will see action this year, but they need Cork to continue in it. And Cork are not guaranteed any camogie pass today, but they've got off to the perfect start on the scoreboard. 
Amy O'Connor. From the St. Vincent's Club. They're very proud of her there. But she won an All-Star a couple of years ago. They organised a big homecoming for her. That's how much they love Amy in St. Vincent's. To the left of the D. Just come up to the quarter hour mark of this game. Amy O'Connor with the free. Puts the ball over the bar. 15 minutes gone in this game. And it's Cork 1-1. Clare 1 point. Just to give you the latest score from the other game in the group at the moment, we have Galway in front by four points to nil against Down. All four scores coming from freeze from Carrie Dolan. Izzy O'Regan to Fiona Keating. Fiona Keating stopped there and Orla Duggan takes the scraps. Now what can Claire do with this? Driven down the field by Chloe Morey. Chloe Morey in the direction of Sian Spillan. Sian Spillan, did she get a push there? Referee says no foul. Play continues on. Libby, Libby Cobbinger up to Cleaney Hilly. Good interception there for Claire by Abby Walsh and Abby Walsh there just trying to hold it up for a teammate in a saffron and blue jerseys going there along with the jerseys in red but the decision goes in favour of the team in red too and Cork will get a chance to go again Cork considered one of the big three teams in Camogie consistent semi-finalists over the last five years, they've been in three finals, lost the last two to Kilkenny last year by just one point, 113 to 112, and to Galway the previous year, 115 to 112. Two semi final defeats preceded that to the same two teams. 2018, they were last All Ireland Senior Camogie Champions when they beat Kilkenny by 14 points to 13. So we're back now for the free, which is going to be taken by Chloe Sigerson. We know Chloe's well able to hit them from distance. So Chloe Sigerson with the free down in the space looking for Amy O'Connor. Amy O'Connor up against Quiva Kelly, but Amy has the ball. Referees the handout for the advantage. The Cork are going to get another free in. And this is working out nicely. Uh, working out nicely for Cork, who are against the breeze in these early stages. Amy O'Connor will probably take this free if she's okay. So a bit of uh, concern there as well. So lots of stops in the early stages with injuries and hold-ups. And of course, Emer Kelly being the most significant of those. Amy O'Connor made her debut for Cork back in 2014. And in a year that we look forward to the Women's World Cup and the Republic of Ireland in action in a few weeks' time, Amy O'Connor played in the European Championship for the Republic of Ireland at under-19 level also in 2014. She has scored 1-9 in the championship so far. Got 1-5 the last day against Down. So this will be her 10th white flag of this year's championship if it goes over the bar. The Cork manager is Matthew Toomey. His coaches are Liam Cronin and Ger Manley. Goalkeeping coach Teddy O'Donovan. Athletic development is Wesley O'Brien and Owen Dorgan. Physio Donal O'Sullivan, sports psychologist Michelle O'Connor, logistics Anthony O'Neill, the player liaison Jennifer Mehigan, Bo county board liaison Marion McCarthy, and the captain of Cork is on the ball on your screen is Amy O'Connor. A free that she won herself, just a swagger before he puck it is. She had one wide already, that was going to be her second, second wide of the game for Cork. And it remains Cork 1 1, clear a point. 18 and a half minutes gone. Darren Murphy restarts the action. Claire going for the short puckouts. Quiva Kelly will bring it up the field. Claire have to start nailing these passes, and they have because Saoirse McCarthy has the ball. Sent it into space to Katrina Mackey. And Claire finding the bother here. Katrina Mackey didn't get the contact in that that she wanted. She'll be disappointed with that because you would have expected her to put that over her eyes closed. But Claire, with the win, playing the short puckouts, you have to question that policy. If you're playing the short puckouts, you have to make sure you drive it down the field. Claire here has just given a prime example of how that should be done. And it's what Claire needed at the moment an opportunity for a shot. A save from Amy Lee. On your luck with the player with the shot. It's gone out for a 45, but just like that, we were talking about the long ball down, and when it was caught by Onyo Lockton, she forced a save from Amy Lee, and Claire will get an opportunity from the 45. So there it is again, Onyo Lockton, great catch in the air, but the direct route one Kamogi is what Claire needs to do, and they nearly reaped the maximum dividend out of that. Lorna McNamara. Has scored 20 points in Clare's two games so far. Looking to open her account today. 19 and a half minutes gone. 
Clare just again need this to go over until they settle into this contest. Lorna McNamara with the 45. That goes over the bar. 20 minutes gone in the game. It's Clare two points. Cork 1-1. One, one. And both teams have a goal chances and obviously the goal that was scored from Saoirse McCartan down the far side of the field. That's or, um, Chloe Sigerson trying to clear it away. Out over the line, so it's going to be a sideline cut. Chloe Sigerson low to Saoirse McCarthy, who's doing very well in the middle of the park. Gets a touch into space, thought to be a cock jersey there. Not to be. And Claire had possession. Neve OD on the 45 meter line. Might go for a score herself with Neve. Miran Scanlon was knocking around there as well, but again, Claire is starting to realise they'll get the ball into Anya Lachlan. They could do something. Amy Lee shows her composure to win the ball. Sends it out to the left, and Cork will bring it up towards the 45 meter line through Maeve Murphy. Laura Tracy on your screen there. Low ball down in towards the attack and Saoirse McCartan in possession. And Saoirse McCartan will that stay in play. Kira Grogan did her best to throw her off and there's a race out here for Katrina Mackey. And Katrina Mackey, the ball looks like it's dead in play even though her legs went out. Play continues on. Katrina Mackey looking for support but with two clear players around her that took the turn to win it but the foul was committed and Cork will have a free in. And Amy O'Connor will be coming across to take this from the left hoping she'll have more luck than the effort she had in the right in this game so far. Katrina Mackey, one of the modern greats. We can tell you the Galway are now leading down by 1-4 to a point. Neve Hanafi with their goal. So Galway on course to top this group one. Gives them a two-thirds chance of getting straight into a semi-final. If Galway are the unlucky team to go into the quarterfinals, we watch Amy O'Connor take that free. That ball has gone over the bar. 22 minutes gone. And it's 1-2 to Cork. Two points to Clare. But I was just going to say that if Galway are the team, the group winners that don't get straight into the semi-final, they can't play Cork or Clare. They'll play the runners-up of one of the other groups. Foul committed, and again, Clare just running into problems when they go for the short puck out. Susan Daly from Scarver Gunla, not happy with the referee and giving her her opinion. Of course, Susan is on the yellow card too, so she'll have to make sure her opinion is kept in the politest manner possible. Amy O'Connor to take this free. And this will be the opportunity for Cork to put two scores between them. Eight official minutes to half time, but we can expect a significant chunk of over five minutes anyway to be added to that. Amy O'Connor with the free for Cork. That looks good. The umpire's going for the white flag. The ball has gone over the bar. And it's Cork 1-3. Clare 2 points. 4 points between the teams. And Darren Murphy goes long on this occasion. Nevo D coming out to run on that. But is the O'Regan keeping very, very tight with her? The scramble for possession. Good touch by Nebo D in the ground, but again it's Izzy O'Regan, read it well, gives the ball back to Laura Tracy. Laura Tracy inside the 65 meter line, down again, see the open space to Clara Leave, and, and Amy O'Connor has turned inside here, and Amy O'Connor is on the run, she's Katrina Mackey to the left, a wonderful hook down there by Quiva Kelly, Amy O'Connor will get the rebound, she'll get the point out of it, but Quiva Kelly certainly rescued Clare from conceding a second goal, let's have a look at that, Amy O'Connor uh, with the score there, uh, that was the block down there by Quiva Kelly but the second time of asking Amy puts it over the bar there's five points between the teams but Izzy O'Regan deserves a lot of credit to you for reading the break there to send that ball down the left but you have to question the space the clear defence are leaving in front of that inside line and you only have to look at the three names for Cork Amy O'Connor Katrina Mackey Saoirse McCartan three of the most dangerous forwards in the country and they're being afforded space between that and also Clare's poking the ball out short and not managing to get the halfway line. There's a lot for John Clamity to look at here. But that being said, it's still very, very early stages. And plenty of time to correct this. Clare have a free. Lorna McNamara is going to take this. Just checking the grass. The wind is not going directly in Clare's favour. It's kind of going towards the corner. But it still favours the Banner County. There are men roaring to Grove Park next week. Can the women do the same? Lorna McNamara with the free. Puts it over the bar. Again, a score that they need, but they need a bit of momentum. 24 and a half minutes gone. And it's Cork 1-4. Clare three points. And Amy Lee is going to go again. Amy Lee down. 
managed to find the player just about, but unfortunately for Aoife Healy, the touch didn't stay in. So care to restart the action to Linda Daly. Linda and Susan are triplets, along with their sister Rachel. Two of them involved here today, and then they'll be disappointed with that. And Eva Healy given a chance to make amends, gives it to Chloe Sigerson. Chloe Sigerson with a long ball down to Saoirse McCartan, and Saoirse McCartan can get ahead of Kira Grogan. It could be danger. Kira Grogan doing very, very well there. The referee's blown the whistle, concerned about a possible head injury. So we're going to have a hold up and play. Well, Saoirse McCartan going to receive some treatment. Saoirse McCartan is the most recent All-Ireland winner on the field of play. She was part of the down team that won the 2020 All-Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship. Has moved to Cork since and transferred down to Cork and played against her native county in round two. Didn't score on that occasion. Indeed, the goal that Saoirse McCartan got in this game was her first score of the championship. So she'd be delighted with that. It's going to be clear to restart the action with an indirect free. Four minutes of normal time remaining, but as we mentioned there, expect about nine or ten minutes to go here. So Claire here. Looking to see now if she can drive another long ball down the direction of Anya Lockton. And that might fall nicely there, just split over to clear number 14, and that has gone to the left and wide. And that is Claire's first wide of this game. Amy Lee not wasting time. Gets it out to Saoirse McCarthy, and Saoirse McCarthy is on the move. Down the left flank, you look at the pace that Saoirse McCarthy has. Driving down the field, down the left, sending in towards the attack to see if Katrina Mackey can get this, and Katrina Mackey using her experience to put the body in the way, sending it inside again for Saoirse McCarthy, and Saoirse McCarthy collided with the player, but Claire have won it back, and the ball is out in the direction of Chloe Morey, and Chloe Morey going to send a long ball down in towards the attack, and see Anne Spillane in the white helmet, trying to get it, but being marked very, very tightly by Libby Cobbinger. Laura Tracy has possession now for Cork, sends the ball across. You, that Maeve Callan would be there. Maeve not playing football this year, just focusing on the Camogie. Sends the ball in the direction of Izzy O'Regan. Izzy O'Regan on the 45 metre line. Moving up the field, looking for support. The referee says too many steps. Claire have got the reward. And will get a chance now to get a free. And Lorna McNamara will look to get her third point of this game. After 27 and a half minutes. Just want to give a shout out to Darren Maguire from the Arrow Club in Ennis. She was the official mascot for today. And she's here. And many young players are here. They'll be on the field at half time for mini games exhibition. Good atmosphere here in Cusick Park. Lorna McNamara with the free sails between the posts. The ball goes over the bar on 28 minutes. And it's back to a three point ball game. It's clear four points. Cork 1 4. Amy Lee restarts the action, sends it out the far side of the field. Maeve Callan with the bright boots moves up to the 65, looking for support. Claire now is starting to get smarter. Nevo D, she showed her experience there just to curtail the cork number four. And the balls will be played for there inside the cork 65 meter line. Tina Healy there in the green helmet with the ball. Gives the pass across to Chloe Sigerson. Chloe Sigerson going to go for a long drive. Hoping that Saoirse McCarthy can get on this. But Claire might be able to deal with it. However, that's good hands there by Aoife Healy. Aoife Healy tries to get inside near and Scannon. Gets inside the 45 meter line. The ball is there to be played for. And the hurl is gone. The foul committed, says the referee. So it's going to be a free in for Cork. And Amy O'Connor will get a chance to restore the Cork cushion a little bit. We're going to keep an eye out for the fourth official to see what he will signal. So Amy O'Connor now to take this free inside the 45 metre line. We're inside the final minute of normal time. But we'll find, see what's exactly in a moment. Amy O'Connor getting ready to take this. So Amy O'Connor with the free for Cork, puts the ball over the bar, and Cork go back four in front, one five to four points. So Darren Murphy from Clare Castle 
Long ball down again, looking for the half forward line, looking for Nemo D in particular, just got away from Nemo on that occasion. And Chloe Sigerson back in the kind of a holding role, uh, reading the action, didn't work out for Adair. Claire will have a sideline cut. Still haven't seen the fourth official there yet to put anything up. As the 30 minute mark is just approaching us. Indeed, the 30 minute mark has just been hit. Chloe Mori with the sideline cut. Libby Hobbinger is going to take this for Cork. Cleena Healy there as well, but four clear jerseys around, and this is Linda Daly. Linda Daly, though, ran into a sea of red, and Cleena Healy has it back again. Plenty of battle for possession in this match. Nemo D goes to the ground, gets back up. Cleena Healy still fighting for the ball. Maeve Callan there as well. Six minutes of injury time, we've been told. We've played 30 seconds of that. High challenge uh, against Cork, so Clare will have a free, and Lorna McNamara will come back out to take this. And Lorna McNamara, Clare's top scorer in the match so far with three points. And I suppose when you look at a clear angle, they won't be too despondent, even though they'll be disappointed not to play better. They've left a lot of gaps open, but they're only three points down. Lorna McNamara with this free. And it goes over the bar. And a great score there from Lorna McNamara from that free. Brings it back to a three-point ball game. Clear five points. Cork 1-5. Amy Lee getting us going again. Long ball down the field. And it breaks nicely now for Cork. And they're on the move. In towards the attack to Saoirse McCartan. Good play from Saoirse McCarthy to set that up. And this is Fiona Keating. And Fiona Keating's on the move there. And the clear have just opened out there. A chance for Fiona Keating. A goal for Cork. A goal for Cork. And again it was clear. Leaving the gaps open. And Cork put the ball to the back of the net. And it's 2-5 to 5 points. Just where we're saying clear. Wouldn't be too despondent. There goes Fiona Keating. Cutting right through the defence. Nobody to stop her. Decided to back herself. And rifles the ball to the back of the net. And it's 6 between them. Cork 2-5. Clear five points, and how significant will that score be? Cork smell blood. Or uh, Chloe Sigerson sends the ball down for Saoirse McCartan. Saoirse told about taking on the player, but decides to go past her instead. She goes past her. Katrina Mackey's inside. Katrina Mackey with the ball gets surrounded by clear jerseys. She's managed to turn the ball and puts the ball over the bar. Good hands again from uh, Katrina Mackey to get that score, and just like that now. It's two six to five points. There's Katrina Mackey. Claire did get the bodies back just in time. Katrina happy enough to take the points. Seven between them. Just like that. Two and a half minutes after six have been played. And Quiva Kelly has the ball for Claire. Looks around, gives the pass inside for Quiva Carmody. Quiva Carmody don't get now muscled by Fiona Keating. Might work out for Cork. Amy O'Connor a little touch. Saoirse McCartan there as well. Trying to get it down towards uh, Katrina Mackey, but not to be. Claire have won the ball back. Abby Walsh gives it to Chloe Mori, and Chloe Mori in towards the corner, looking for Cian Spillane. Looks like she's pushed up into a corner forward position, or a full forward position anyway. Uh, there she is. There was a high challenge in there, but no fouls as the referee. Cian Spillane has the ball. Orla Douglas outside. I would see might go herself. Cian looking for that point, and that's gone to the right and wide for Claire. Second wide of the game for the hosts. And Amy Lee wants to get the tempo up for Cork. She knows if they play it faster, they have opportunities. Tina Healy on the move again down the far side of the field, skips past the 65 meter line. Uh, into the space for the Katrina Mackey likes. Here's some McCartan just lurking there. So is Amy O'Connor. Claire's defence have to be super tight here. Good work there by Susan Daly. She's not making it easy. It'd be a good ball to win if she gets it. Both players lose their balance and the referee blows the whistle. I think she's going to throw this in on the 20 meter line. You can hear there just the Clare management having discussions underneath us in the commentary box. They'll be disappointed how this half is finished. They'll be disappointed how this half has unfolded in general. Cork, though, just get them out their business, as they've done so often over many, many years. 28 times All-Ireland champions. They've actually appeared in 50 All-Ireland Camogie finals. have been runners up at 22 occasions, including 2021 and 2022. It's not often Cork team goes five years without winning the All-Ireland. The last time of note was between 2009 and 2014. Of course, the great Wexford team, three in a row winners, were there. Wexford played Dublin later on. They still have a chance of making the All-Ireland quarterfinals. 
But they need to put up a big score against Dublin and hope that Kilkenny suffer a mishap against Tipperary. That's part of our Super Saturday here on the Kabogi Association YouTube channel. Kilkenny and Tip is on at 6 o'clock. The referee spotted a push, so it's going to be a free in for Clare. Foul committed by Laura Tracy on Nevo D. So on the 45 meter line, Lorna McNamara has been very accurate with her freeze. And if she puts this over, it'll be her 25th point of the championship. She has declared top score on show here today in Cusick Park in Innes. I thought that free was going to be a bit further myself, but it's decided down the 65 meter line. No complaints from Lorna. We're inside the final minute of injury time. That was signalled. So to bring this back to a six point game. Lorna McNamara batted out by Amy Lee. Could Onyo Lachlan get this with Pamela Mackey staying very, very tight with her? The umpire having a good look, but Claire managed to hold on to possession out to Sian Spillan. Sian Spillan needs support. Quiva Armady is getting in range, but she's won the free. So Lorna McNamara gets another go. 35 minutes and 50 seconds gone in the first half. Cork in front by seven points. And Lorna McNamara needs to put this over. Bring it back to six. Claire well capable of getting goals. So Lorna McNamara getting ready to take that. I just heard the background there. Victory for Cork against Tipperary in ladies football. We're watching Cork against Clare in Camogie. Lorna McNamara with the free. And Lorna McNamara puts the ball over the bar in the 37th minute, her 25th point of the championship. And at six points to two six, and the referee Liz Dempsey blows the half time whistle and a good way for Clare to finish. But the concession of two goals have been the difference. Searsha McCartan with a goal on 12 minutes gave Cork a lead. They never surrendered. But even though they only led by three points in injury time, Fiona Keating rifling down the central channel gave Cork their second goal and those two goals are the difference between the teams Cork will be happy with that first half unfolded especially against the Wayne exploiting the space though they were guilty of a few disappointing wides three the official tally but a few other chances went to Beggin and Duran Murphy having to pull off a couple of stops as well for Clare they're probably guilty of their own undoing between the short puckouts and leaving space for the Cork long balls when Clare have gone direct they've asked questions of this Cork defence against the window they'll have to be more smart how they do it in the second half but this contest is still very much alive you can see on your screen the young players from various different clubs in Clare are coming out to entertain the crowd at half time we're going to enjoy that and take a break for about 10 minutes but when we're back we'll have live coverage in the second half of the Skin Demplex All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship game and it's Cork in front at half time they lead by two goals it's Go Cork 2-6 Clare 6 points
Good afternoon. Thank you very much and welcome back here to Cusick Park in Ennis as we get ready for the second half of the Glen Dimplex All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship. Cork leading Clare by 2-6 to 6 points. Goals from Saoirse McCartan and Fiona Keating, the difference between the teams. They're all ready to go. Cork have the win in the second half and just before the ball is thrown in, a big shout out to Mary and Lillian who are watching our coverage down in Ballinlaw. If you're a Cork supporter, the Cork Intermediates play Galway in their own winner-takes-all match. That's a Five o'clock in the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship. But there's still a game to be won here in a winner takes all game. Cork on the attack as Fiona Keating sends it down to Katrina Mackey. And Katrina Mackey uses her strength trying to find Keena Healy. Keena Healy just misses out. And Abby Walsh gets in the way for Claire. And Nemo D is going to try and start the counter attack. Claire need a good start in the second half after the disappointment of the way they conceded some of their scores in that first half. Nemo D sends it in towards the inside line, hoping that Lorna McNamara can get the end of that it's been kept in play no it hasn't the umpire has signaled the first wide of this second period and that was for Claire just running through the scores in this game for Cork Amy O'Connor with five points in the match four of them from freeze goals for Fiona Keating and Saoirse McCartan Katrina Mackey with the other score for Cork the Lorna McNamara has gone down with an injury too now so it's going to be another Holds up in play and just mentioning she is Claire's top scorer with five, a four from freeze, one from a 45. Orla Duggan, the other Claire scorer in this game. But Dorna McNamara, a monster minor only in 2020, scored 1 5 when Claire beat Offaly in the relegation final in 2022. That did take place, but of course, with Galway winning the All Ireland Intermediate Championship last year, no team was relegated. But Clare didn't take any chances on the day, winning that particular contest by 6 11 to 1 13. There is going to be, there is a change at half time. Aoife Keane for Miney Kildamona came on at half time, replacing Linda Daly. And so, no changes for Cork that we're aware of. But the biggest concern for Clare here, they lost Emer Kelly to a serious enough injury in the first half. They'll be hoping now they don't lose their other corner forward. She's in the tangle there. She's sitting up anyway. Hopefully it's more encouraging. Just as we did mention before the break, the halftime score in the other match in Group 1 of the Glen Demplex All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship. Galway 110, down four points. So I think it's safe to say that Galway will top Group 1 and the winners of this match will qualify as the runners-up. Just to confirm as well how it's all working on this Super Saturday of... Kamogi on the Kamogi Association YouTube channel. Stick with us all day. We've won over the Gizantrum live at half past four. And this is a blow there. You would have heard my colleague Patrick Mulcahy in the background with the all because uh, Lorna McNamara is gone. So there's going to be another change. And Amy Keating will be coming on for Claire. So just like the first half, Claire have lost the corner forward. And They've lost their top score, and this is going from bad to worse for Clare, who need to win this game to stay in the championship. Because Cork have the better scoring difference, and they have the six-point advantage here. Amy Lee restarts the action. I'll run through the permutations for the knockout stages later on. Of course, Kilkenny and Tipperary also coming up at six o'clock. Kleena Healy with the ball for Cork, sitting down towards the attack, and it's who's going to take it. Amy O'Connor. Katrina Mackey said, "You have that ball." Amy O'Connor wants to take on Quiva Kelly. They're having a great duel. The challenge went in. The advantage is given. Amy O'Connor didn't need it. Puts the ball over the bar. First score of the second half in the fourth minute. Amy O'Connor with the point. She's the game's top scorer. And Cork now lead by 2-7 to 6 points. So Darren Murphy. Down and towards the middle there now. Nevo D fighting there with Aoife Healy. And it's won an application by Maeve Callan. Working hard for Cork in this game. You're in Scanlon trying to keep it in play. And Chloe Sigerson had good feet there in regs. The ball stayed with her. But there's a stop again. Aoife Healy picking up a knock. And it'll be the walking wounded, really, for whoever comes through this. Because the winning team will be in Crow Park next week, whether it's Saturday or Sunday. That will depend on the draw. Aoife Healy was the minor, uh, All-Ireland minor final player of the match last year when Cork won the title. She's also won... And All-Ireland School's football crown with St. Mary's as well. She's getting on her feet. But just to mention the draws, we said there the three group winners will go into a hat. The first team draw now will go into the quarter-final draw. And the other two teams go straight through to the semi-finals in three weeks' time. And then that unlucky group winner 
joins the three runners up in the quarterfinal draw for the games in Crow Park next week. No repeat pairings will be allowed. This is Aoife Keane for Clare into the hands of the goalkeeper, Amy Lee. She's dealt with every high ball so relaxed over the course of the game. And Cork just moving it out as Clare trying to show a bit more urgency. Buren Scanlon there with possession down the left, but Libby Coppinger keeping very, very tight with her Cian's plan with the ball for Clare. Gives it back to Aoife Keane. Aoife Keane to Quiva Carmody. Quiva Carmody back to Orla Duggan. Orla Duggan just going through a couple of players and a touch there from Libby Coppinger. Just a little touch. There are the differences and Cork have overturned possession and moving it down the field. Aoife Healy, as you can see, back there moving away. Saoirse McCartan, where's 15? Looking around for options, and the option comes from Chloe Sigerson. Chloe looks up, sees the space. Amy O'Connor told it was going to go her way, but it comes to Katrina Mackey, but that works out okay too. Katrina Mackey, it's time to go for the shot. Katrina Mackey with the shot, puts the ball over the bar. And it's another score for Cork. They go eight points ahead, and Katrina Mackey with the score. Chloe Sigerson with the assist. So we'll just see that score there again. Chloe Sigerson sending the ball down. We all thought it was going to go one way, but it went to Katrina Mackey. Realised she had the space and pops it over the bar. And Cork lead by 2-8 to 6 points. And Clare now will really need to make things happen soon if they're going to stay in this match. Nemo D sending it down towards the attack. Orla Duggan getting involved as well, but it's Laura Tracy that takes control. Passes out to Kleena Healy. Cleaning Healy up against Abby Walsh. And Cleaning Healy just trying to get through the clear wing back and she's managed to hold on to possession. Pass in the direction of Pamela Mackey who's pushed up a small bit. And she's here, McCarthy, but Claire have turned it all round again. And it's the opportunity, Orla Duggan with the shot. It's a difficult angle, but that's a wonderful score for Claire. And Orla Duggan with the point. And as one they needed their first score of the second half. And it's now Claire seven points, Cork two eight. Here it is again. Possession overturned. Orla Duggan waiting first. Had a look at the post and sends it over the bar. Double scores it is. 2-8 to 7 points. Clare need the next couple of points but Cork have possession. Long ball down by Izzy O'Regan towards Katrina Mackey. Katrina Mackey looking for options. She's going to back herself. Amy O'Connell's to the right. Sends it across to the captain. Can she get the third goal for Cork? The shot a goal for Cork. A goal for Cork and Amy O'Connor gets the third goal and it's hard to see anything but a Cork victory here now. Katrina Mackey taking the ball. Turned inside her player and Amy O'Connor gets here, here to the right of the screen backing away. And she always knew what to do. Her second goal of the championship. And Cork lead clear by 3-8 to 7 points. And is there any way back for Clare now? Cian Spillane. Ball goes out but it's in favour of Cork. And Libby Cobbinger will restart the action. Clare will be very disappointed how this game has materialised. Because they would have really felt... They could give Cork a big match. They only lost out to Galway. Yes, conditions were difficult that day, but they turned it back into the contest in the second half and only went down by three points in the end. But Cork, just business as usual. They are missing a couple of players for injuries and other reasons, but they're just getting on with the job. Saoirse McCartan's into the cross. Clare should win this one. It didn't work out for Kira Grogan. She needs support. Clare Hare is back there. No, Clare Hare is waiting for the ball. Just over hit, but it'll fall for Chloe Morey. Chloe Morey passes it out to Susan Daly. Susan Daly down the left now for Murin Scanlon. Claire just needs to focus on the job. She ran into the Cork player. Play continues on. Chloe Sigerson holds her ground. Breaks kindly for Orla Duggan. Two great scores in play in this match for the Clare number 10. Onyo Lockton, that catch in the first half. Amy Lee with the fantastic save. If that had gone the net for Clare. Who knows what type of game we'll be watching. But it's all doom and gloom. We won't give up on the banner just yet. Nearly nine minutes gone in the second half. But Cork very much in control of this match. See Anne Spillane with possession for Clare. Looking around for support. But Cork just getting the bodies there. Babe Murphy was knocking around there too. Clare still have possession. This is Amy Keating. Amy Keating will have a go at the posts. The umpires have a good look and that's gone to the left and wide. It was always a difficult shot, but one, if you're rooting for Clare, you're willing to go over the bar. So there's a Cork player tying their laces, which is the reason for the hold up. 
Amy Lee was playing the puck outs fast in the first half. She'll be happy enough now, just take her time with them. No scoring difference to worry about because Galway well ahead in the other game. Saoirse McCarthy down to Saoirse McCarthy. But as Katrina Mackey, every ball she's had in this game, she's done something with it. Katrina Mackey just lost her balance. But she still has the wear at all to give it to Saoirse McCarthy. And Saoirse McCarthy with the shot puts the ball over the bar. And even if you just watch this score for the way that Katrina Mackey conducts herself, she lost her balance, as you see her here. But still the wear it all to look for the nearest teammates. That was Saoirse McCartan. And she puts the ball over the bar. And it's now Cork 3-9. Clare 7 points. And Clare now with possession through Chloe Mori. Chloe Mori sends it down towards the attack. They still believe. But Cork now just getting ahead of 50-50. Libby Cobbager. I don't think she's lost a 50-50 in the match. Quiva Carmody. But Clare gives it back to Orla Duggan. Or like it popped them over. Will she pop this one over as though she's sending it in towards the house looking for Anya Lachlan? It breaks for Anya Lachlan and a save again from Amy Lee. And I don't even know how she managed to stop that. But Amy Lee has pulled off one of those save of the season contenders because we were betting on Anya Lachlan. We'll just have a look at this there now in a moment. Saoirse McCartan sending the ball in towards the attack. Katrina Mackey there. So Claire managed to clear that for the moment. So we'll just see if we get a chance to see that save. If not, we'll move, we'll move on there. And there it is again. And the ball sent in there to Anya. Locked in. And just her presence there with the shot. And locked down. And that was a wonderful save from Amy Lee. We can tell you that Chloe Sigurdsson has put the ball over the bar there for Cork since to make it 3, 10 to 7 points. And Cork are now making their first substitution as Emma Murphy comes on the field to play. So it looks like it's Keena Healy, the player that'll be making way. And Claire are going to make another change too as Leisha Ryan comes on for them. And I can tell you that Lana Ryan will be coming on the field to play shortly too. So I think it's Quiva Kelly that's making way for... No, it's not Quiva Kelly, actually. She was walking off and told it wasn't her. So it might be Susan Daly, the full-back, is it? So actually, Susan Daly is the pair making way for Leisha Ryan. And I can tell you, if you're a clear supporter, Lana Ryan from Kilkitchen will be on the field to play shortly, too. But just to repeat there, it was the score from Chloe Sigerson, Cork's last point, making it 3-10 to 7 points. And Cork with the ball now. And they're just starting to really put the boot down there. The dig is down last week. This is Fiona Keating. Last time she ran like this, she got a goal. Fiona Keating get within range. Just didn't have the balance to keep going. Claire got tight with her. But Saoirse McCartan reading the game very, very well today. Turns on the left hand side and puts the ball over the bar for another score. And it's now 3 11 to 7 points. And, um, Cork just in control there as we wait to restart the action. So we'll just see it here again as Alana Ryan comes on the field of play. This is Fiona Keating on the move, looking around. Saoirse McCartan, many times she's done that there today, turns on the left-hand side, puts the ball over the bar, and Cork stretched to 3-11 to 7 points. Alana Ryan has come on for Chloe Morey. That is the substitution for Clare. So they're emptying the bench now and giving players an opportunity. Cork on course for an all Ireland Camogie quarter-final in Crow Park next weekend. Just to repeat, the draw will take place here in the Camogie Association YouTube channel in association with entry about half past seven this evening after the third of our live games, Waterford against Antrim at 4.30 and then Kilkenny against Tipperary at six o'clock. And of course, we'll be keeping updated on the other matches taking place as well. We'll give you an update on Galway and Down in just a moment where uh, the game between Offaly and Limerick takes place at half past four and Wexford against Dublin. That's on at six o'clock. Wexford still with an outside chance of making those knockout stages as well. Amy O'Connor there battling with, uh, with Quiva Kelly and that uh, goes in favour of the Cork captain and he said the latest score we have from the game up in Park Esler in Yuri. Galway won 11, down 5 points. So Galway in front of that by 9 scores. Going to restart the action the far side of the field. Looks like Fiona Keating is the pair that will get us up and going again. Look at the clock, 14 and a half minutes gone in the second half. Amy O'Connor takes the shoulder. Referee says it was an illegal one. It looked uh, 
a contact itself, but the referee would have, didn't it indicate a free now in fairness to Liz Dempsey, so could be just a bit of concern with the way Amy O'Connor went down. But Amy O'Connor, second time she's been down in this match, a player that Cork will not want to take any risks on, and I would not be a bit surprised if Matthew Toomey and his management team decide to take the Cork captain off, but they have given the yellow card to Claire Hare for the shoulder contact. So, um, a few players there now just not happy with that, the care side of things, but it's um, Amy O'Connor just sitting up. Has been in fire today in this game. Five points in the first half. Of course, has added a goal and a point to that tally since. So she's won six in total, but no one, Amy O'Connor. Take much more than that for her to go off the field of play. Claire Field was a fair shoulder. They're not happy with the decision, but either way, it's going to be a free in. And the court captain we start the action. We're officially inside the final quarter of this game in round three at the Glen Dimplex. All Ireland Senior Camogie Championship. And if you're a Cork supporter, you might be looking to see if you can find any deals in Dublin next week because Cork will be playing in Grow Park unless something uh, amazing turnaround happens in this game as Amy O'Connor lands the free, puts the ball over the bar. And the 46th minute, making it now Cork 3-12, Clare 7 points. And the change is taking place, and Cork are bringing on Clodagh Finn. And she's coming on for Katrina Mackey. So Katrina Mackey is in a massive contribution to this victory for Cork today. And she's coming off now, and Clodagh Finn from Fodder O'Neill's gets her opportunity now to impress in the Cork attack. Cork feel the job is done. They lead this game by 14 points. Quiva Kelly, but there's still 14 minutes of Camogie plus injury time. One big score could change an awful lot. So we're going to hold up the far side of the field. It's against Golden again. Liz Dempsey will throw the ball in. Claire Hare, the word number six, is there for Cork. And she's, uh, for Claire, sorry, she's going up against Emma Murphy from Glen Rovers. So the ball is thrown in. Off we go again. Might come on for Orla Duggan. Here's McCarthy there too. Goes out. And Claire to restart the action. So Claire Hare to take this free. She's well able to right up the field and get a goal. She did that against Cork in last year's championship. That was the game in Porky Wren. And again it looks like Laura Tracy that's on the ground for Cork. Laura Tracy, the agency nurse, two-time All-Star, and one of the finest centre-backs. And, of course, when she went into that position after the retirement of Gemma O'Connor, there was always big shoes to fill, and she's managed to do that very, very well. We can tell you that Hayley Ryan from Black Rock will be coming on for Cork shortly. As the bigger picture now has been considered. Is a clear player receiving attention as well. So the contest just lost a bit of bite at the moment, understandably with the difference between the teams. A few players getting some water. Temperature is picking up here in Ennis. Again, conditions fantastic. A bit of wind, as we mentioned, blowing mainly to the right of your screen. Favouring Cork in the second half, and they have taken advantage of that. They led by 2 6 to 6 points at half time of all. Scored clear by 1 6 to a point. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to happen this year for Clare. They have been in the All Ireland semi final on two occasions back in 1944 and 1978. In 1978, when I was making my own christening, uh, they beat Clare, Cork beat Clare by 5 15 to 3 1. I can leave you to guess what age that makes me. Free for Claire. Amy Keating is going to take this. So you can hear their request for a cork slip. But we're watching Amy Keating with the free. And that doesn't work out for her. And that goes to the left and wide. Claire with three wides in the second half. Cork with none. Cork be starting the action. I told Amy Lee was going to slow it down. But now she wants to get them going again. Saoirse McCarthy was never going to win the race with the slitter on that occasion. So Atlanta Ryan 
to take this sideline cut just outside their own 45 meter line and sends it down in looking for the attack looking for Aoife Keen, where number 21 the Clare subs want to make an impression especially going forward a lot of great work being done in Clare Camogie. They've appeared in all Ireland finals at underage. Just haven't managed to get that big result in championship yet. But there's a lot of their players still very, very young. And can make a big impression over the next couple of years. And of course, we've seen the strong performances of clubs like Ina Kildamona and Scarif Agunna in the Munster Club campaigns in recent years. They'll still be there, thereabouts, hovering outside. What do you call them? The top three, the top four, the top five. Corker definitely one of the top three. That ball goes out over the line. Chloe Sigerson happy enough to leave it there. And we are having our change. And it is Hayley Ryan coming on. And she's going to replace Maeve Callan. So Cork picked their change. We're inside the final 10 minutes of this game. In the Glendon Blacks All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship. Cork in control. If you're listening to us rather than watching us, it's 3 12 to 7 points. Favouring Cork. Three goals from Saoirse McCartan, Fiona Keating, and Amy O'Connor. And the other game in the group, Galway 114 down 6 points. That's the latest score that we have. So Galway, a two thirds chance of going straight through to an Ireland semi final. Cork will be in Crow Park next weekend. So the battle outside the D there now as Cian Spillane moves to the left looking for support. That support comes from Euron Scanlon, but she just couldn't get control of the ball in Cork. Not relenting as Chloe Sigerson takes possession, gives it back. That's the first touch for Haley Ryan and she wins the free. And the free taken quickly by Chloe Sigerson. Crossfield ball in the direction of Clodagh Finn. But this on the move now, Cork inside the 45 meter line. And an opportunity to go for a score and to build their impressive lead. And that ball has gone over the bar. So Cork make it 3 13 to 7 points. It was Emma Murphy that put that over for them. And that is now 1 5 unanswered for Cork. Emma Murphy with a point, making it 3 13 to 7 points. Clara possession in the middle, Laura Duggan trying to turn inside, and she was as clearly held there as you'd expect any rugby player possibly to be when that World Cup comes up later in the year. So Clare have a free. They'll want to finish in a high, especially for their young supporters. They came to watch them today. They'll be disappointed. That's the clear supporters, of course. They'll be disappointed for that. Those have travelled from Cork, and you can see a few of the far side of the field in the terrace stand over there, waving the, waving the red and white. They're happy with their trip up to Clare today. Lots of stops and starts. The referee uh, telling Clare here to be I don't think Clare here has any reason to slow this down. So the Clare joint captain sends the ball in towards the attack. What can come out of this? Into the hands of a Cork defender again. And the ball is cleared out to Chloe Sigerson. Chloe Sigerson down the right in the direction of Saoirse McCartan has come out to get more involved in the action. Nevo D wins possession back. But just couldn't control the ball. But she came in a foul or came in a touch. It's a Clare ball anyway. So Nevo D leaves over Clare here. Seven minutes remaining in this game. Clare here, there on your screen, won her first county title by Anna Kilimona in 2016. When they beat Newmarket and Fergus. I think they beat them in the semi final that year, they beat them in the final the following year. I stand to be corrected in that as Izzy O'Regan gets a little touch there for Cork. Now the teammate finds out towards Chloe Sigerson on a lot of ball this second half. But there for Clare is Lana Ryan trying to take possession. Clare just wanted to push it towards the goal, get a score, but not to be. And, he, and Eva Healy sends the ball out the field towards the 65 meter line. Saoirse McCartan trying to get control. Kira Grogan keeping very, very tight with her, but Saoirse sends it out towards the left to Emma Murphy. She's got one point in this game already. She might go for another one. She might send it inside to Clona Finn. Clona Finn's inside the D. They're trying to turn inside. Has Amy O'Connor outside it, but a third clear player, Claire Hare, the player that did enough to overturn that. Orla Duggan there to take the scrap, trying to get it out. And it's a battle there in possession, but Claire have not cleared this easily yet. Claire here with the ball and moving up the field a challenge on her she goes to the ground she wins the free and it'll be a free out for Claire and Claire here driving it down the field 
Cork with possession there through Laura Tracy. Laura Tracy up towards the 65 near her line. This is a good ball for Saoirse McCartan. If it comes, it might be left for Amy O'Connor. Amy O'Connor with the ball. Gives it to Saoirse. Saoirse will have another score in this game. And Saoirse McCartan with the shot off the upright and over the bar. Saoirse McCartan with the score. And Cork now go 3-14 to 7 points ahead. And we'll just see if we can have a look at that. Saoirse McCartan there left the ball off for Amy O'Connor and there it was then and she popped it over the bar from the left she's had a good game with Saoirse McCartan many of the Cork players have and they stretch that lead now to 17 points not a margin we expected coming in here today and Claire have spilled the ball again two players tangled Saoirse McCartan goes to the ground referee's going to give Cork a free be a free on the 45 metre line um, another collision between players and those few those haven't gone Claire's way but Cork will have the free and a hole up there for Saoirse McCartan as we mentioned made our Cork debut actually against Clare in uh, last year and scored a goal in that match that was in the league Amy O'Connor to take this free we're inside the final five minutes and he's just over four minutes to go another change for Cork getting ready Orla Cronin will be on the field to play shortly Another big name player for Cork. Another great option for them going forward. But Amy O'Connor, that swagger again, takes the free. Amy O'Connor puts the ball over the bar. And Orla Cronin will come on the field of play. But it's Amy O'Connor with the free after the foul on Sergio McCartan. And that makes it 3.15 to 7 points. And it's Sergio McCartan coming off the field of play. No risks there taken after going down. So she goes off, Orla Cronin on. Claire go for the short puck out in the direction of Leisha Ryan, where number 20, they've given it away, Ola Cronin's first touch, is itself a big opportunity here for Claude Finn perhaps, and Claude Finn with the shot, and it was a ill in the first half for Claire, these short puck outs really costing them there, as we have a look at that, Ola Cronin with her very first touch of the game, we'll see it here in just a moment, gets another score for Cork, and it's now 3.16 to 7 points, here it is, the short puck out wasn't dealt with by Claire, Ola Cronin had possession, gives it to Claude Finn. Finn and Clodagh Finn putting the ball over the bar and Cork are on the move again as Amy O'Connor is on the move here. Fiona Keeney with the pass. Amy O'Connor save from Darren Murphy. An important save for the Clare goalkeeper. While the puck goes out and going according to the plan there. Uh, she made the stop. Uh, she's made a few stops in this game. And it remains 3.16 to Cork. Seven points to Clare. As we look at the clock and the clock says three minutes remaining. So we're going out for the 45. Amy O'Connor will have only one tall with this, and that's to pop this over the bar. Good workout for her, and reaping a much bigger harvest than she expected here today. She scored 1 8 in this match so far. That matched her total in the previous two games combined. So she puts this over the bar. She'll have more than doubled her championship tally. In this game, and she puts the 45 over the bar, does Amy O'Connor. 3.17 to 7 points. And Amy O'Connor has now scored 2.17 in Championship 2023, which actually equals 23 points. Foul committed on Alana Ryan. Of course, when you're a defender, you can take it out of their hands. The referee has blown the whistle. So I'm not too sure exactly. I didn't see his other substitution there. The referee's going to take... Well, the free was taken by a defender from the hands, which is allowed in Kamoki. But either way, Claire here going to take this. It was just outside the 45. My apologies on that. But anyway, we're going to have the free here for Claire now. And it's going to be taken by Claire here. Referee, though, Liz Dimps, he's having a chat with the linesman. So we're going to see what happens here now. So... Well, whether the free was incorrectly taken or not, they'll be allowed to take it from the ground now because Claire Hare is going to take this free. So we'll just get on with it. Just over a minute of normal time remaining. Ball sent down in towards the attack. And that's Nemo D from the left trying to see could she find Anya Lachlan inside. The Cork defenders staying tight, not making it easy. Pamela Mackey has been keeping us tight there. Only those two big catches as she got cut out for. And the scramble inside the 20 meter line. 
Again, Cork drive it away for Healy out to Saoirse McCarthy. Saoirse McCarthy has the confidence to turn inside and find a teammate the far side of the field. That's the Spiker gives it to Emma Murphy and Emma Murphy up towards Haley Ryan and Haley Ryan has pairs inside trying to get Clodagh Finn more involved. She has a score. She has options. She's going to back herself and it, she puts it over the bar. Long ball in and Clodagh Finn gets her second and the Cork subs uh, showing exactly what they could do as they had another score to make it 3 eight to seven points and we'll just see Claude Finn's second point and of course she's all recruiting inside but back to herself that was Hayley Ryan sending the ball in towards the attack and that's Claude Finn putting it over the bar and Cork go 20 points clear in this game as Claire have possession they have a free and we're going to have another change and Amy O'Connor will be coming off now for Cork because they are bringing on Ali Smith as we go into injury time we get the confirmation now from the match official in a moment how much injury time will be played but it is a substitution for Cork Ali Smith on for Amy O'Connor and she's done her work here today and we watch Amy Keating and Amy Keating goes for the short pass to Claire Hare. I mentioned about Claire Hare pushing up the field, getting involved in scoring exploits. But she give it back to Amy Keating. Amy Keating across to Eva Keane, and Eva Keane gets the score. And Claire get a point, a much needed point. At least three minutes of out of time is going to be played, but Eva Keane with the score there for Claire, and it's three eighteen to eight points. As Amy Lee restarts the action, long ball down, it's going to break for Emma Murphy, the two number 17s up against each other, the other is Alana Ryan, she left it for Nevo D, Nevo D sends it in towards uh, Quiva Carmody. And Quiva Carmody there just being surrounded by a few Cork players, but she finds it back for Alana Ryan. Alana Ryan sends it across the field, but that's only going to find a red jersey. And Cork have the ball again, and they'll move it down in the direction of Chloe Sigerson. Chloe Sigerson has options, but decides to go direct. They really want to get Clodagh Finn on this ball as much as they can. And Clodagh Finn there, ahead of Kira Grogan, she's turned inside under she of options. Cork have taken off their three inside forwards that have done a lot of damage in this game, and they still have options there as well. They'll be disappointed to have lost their opening game against Galway, but they picked up the two big wins that they have, and they'll be happy to be in an All Ireland quarter final, providing everybody recovers well for next weekend. Two minutes of injury time have been nearly played, so we're just over a minute remaining in this game. So is the O'Regan getting back on her feet, as is Sian Spillan. And we're going to throw this in between the two number eights. Searsha McCarthy for Cork, we have a Carmody for Clare. The Cork player in red on the left trolls them, but the Clare player gets the touch. But have they got control? Sian Splan the white helmet there as well, but Cork getting bodies inside. And Libby Cobbinger has the ball inside their own 65 metre line. Drops the ball in towards the attack. Clodagh Finn going to take this. Clodagh Finn across to Fiona Keating, and Fiona Keating's on the move. Fiona Keating again, Clare, you can see they're not going to make the same mistake as the first half, but the foul was committed. And it's going to be a free in for Cork. And this could very well be the last score of the match. On a day where really, you have to call it honestly, while Cork have been good at what they've done, Clare have been very, very disappointing in their own undoing as well. Orla Cronin is going to take the free. Cork are going to march on to the knockout stages. Don't forget, two more live matches here in association with Entry in the Kabogi Association YouTube page. We won't be wasting much time when this game is over because Waterford and Antrim throw in at half past four. Orla Cronin takes the free in the 63rd minute to make it 319 to 8 points. And we'll see how much more time Liz Dibsey will take. And then at six o'clock, it's Kilkenny against Tipperary. Killian Whelan will be in the commentary box for that. And then we will have the live draw for the Glen Templex All Ireland Senior Camogie quarterfinals. Who gets straight to the semi in Nolan Park in a few weeks' time? Who will get to grow par- play in Crow Park next week? A great opportunity for some counties that don't get that. It too often Cork have had it in abundance in recent times they're going to have it again next week the referee says foul on Amy Keating for Clare so it's going to be a free for them nearly four minutes of added time have been played Cork 319 Clare 8 points and Amy Keating will take this herself 
She took over the freeze after the injury. Of course, you have to take into account Claire suffered two pan injuries at the start of each half for Eber Kelly and for Lorna McNamara. Took away two big options as the Cork defence battled away. And it's all over here in Cusick Park in Ennis and Cork are through to the Glendimplex All-Ireland Senior Camogie quarterfinals after a 3-19 to 8 point victory over Clare. Two goals in the first half from Saoirse McCartan and from Fiona Keating gave them a six point advantage at the break. That was against the wind. Lorna McNamara with five of the Clare scores but she went off injured early in the second half after Emer Kelly went off early in the first half and Cork just picked up the tempo that little bit and pulled away outscoring their opponents by 113 to 2 points in the second 30 plus minutes. Amy O'Connor with the third goal on 37 minutes made it 3 8 to 7 points at that occasion effectively wrapping up the match and they continue to add on the next 10 points unanswered before a score from Aoife Keane for Clare in the 61st minute. For Clare it's a disappointing end to their season they really would have believed they had an opportunity here to pop one over their monster rivals but they just never really got into the game. They look at some of the gaps they left open in defence and some of the short puckouts that never really worked out and the unforced errors as they got the ball into the middle of the park. Cork will feel there's another gear in them. They'll hope some injuries clear up and a bigger deck available when they get there next week. They picked up no knocks here today but a comprehensive performance from the Rebelettes as they book their place in the quarterfinal. They look forward to that draw later on. Just one last time to repeat. Coming up at half past four. Uh, actually coming up now or in the next couple of minutes. Waterford against Antrim. So we'll be wrapping up here very, very quickly from this game. And uh, that's live on the Camogie Association YouTube uh, channel as Group 3 comes to a finish. Both teams are true to the knockout stages, but the, group, the winners of that match will have a chance to go directly into a semi-final. And then at six o'clock, it's Kilkenny against Tipperary. Live coverage of that too before the draw for the quarterfinals of the Glen Deplex All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship takes place about half past seven. The latest score we have from the other game, Galway currently lead down by 117 to 10 points. No doubt when we have that result, they'll give you that during the Waterford Antrim game. But here, it's disappointment for Clare. They're in front of us here in the commentary box. Cork are happy. They are true. And the goals there as the Waterford and Antrim are underway. It's a point to nil to Waterford. So check that out on our Camogie Association YouTube channel now. And that's my cue to wrap it up. Disappointment for Clare, but elation for Cork as goals from Saoirse McCartan, Fiona Keating and Amy O'Connor give them a comprehensive victory in the end. They won this game by 20 points. They are back in the All-Ireland Championship race. We hope you enjoyed our coverage here in Cusick Park in Ennis. And the final score here, it finished Cork 319, Clare 8 points.